One of the fundamental building blocks of robotics is the idea of generalizing rotation and translation. Let us explore one way to achieve this. First, we need to know what is joint and the types of joints. Joints, also known as kinematic pairs, are connections between two physical objects that define the relative motion between them. The physical objects are generally referred to as rigid bodies or links. A revolute joint is one where the relative motion is pure rotation about a single axis. A prismatic joint is one where the relative motion is pure translation along a single axis. A helical or screw joint can be thought of as a combination of revolute and prismatic joints, but the rotation and translation are coupled with one another. That is, there can be no independent rotation or translation. A cylindrical joint is also a combination of revolute and prismatic joints. Unlike a helical joint, there can be independent rotation or translation between the links. A universal joint, also called garden joint, hooks joint, and by many other names, is a combination of two revolute joints that are orthogonal to each other. A spherical joint, also called ball and socket joint, is a combination of three mutually perpendicular revolute joints sharing the same center of rotation. As a matter of fact, any joint can be reimagined as a combination of revolute and prismatic joints. You may be thinking, okay, that's a fact I can accept, but how do we combine rotation and translation? Where is the mathematics? We will get there eventually. I introduced the helical joint as a coupled revolute and prismatic joint. Well, you can turn that idea on its head and instead think of revolute and prismatic joints as edge cases of the general helical joint. By considering only the helical groove or protrusion, it is possible to visualize how this is possible. I believe that you have the power to imagine the corresponding mating part. A helix is just the hypotenuse of a right triangle wrapped around a cylinder of appropriate diameter. The angle at the base of this triangle is called the lead angle and the height of the triangle is called the lead. A lead angle of 0 is equivalent to a revolute joint and a lead angle of 90 degrees is equivalent to a prismatic joint. You may have observed that with a helical joint, there is only one possible axis for rotation and translation. Mathematically, it should be possible to represent the rotation and translation about any arbitrary axis. For this, we turn towards linear algebra. Let's have a small refresher of linear transformations and extend it to affine transformations. All linear transformations follow the rule that all lines remain straight, parallel and equidistant after the transformation. We achieve this by matrix vector multiplication. Let's consider a Euclidean plane with the standard basis vectors i hat and j hat and another vector say 2,3. To transform the vector, we perform matrix vector multiplication, but the columns of the matrix that define their desired transformation are the coordinates of the basis vectors after the same transformation. Instead of visualizing the transformation of just one vector, we can visualize the transformation of the whole plane which consists of all the vectors. I urge you to keep track of the basis vectors and the matrix in the following animations. A random linear transformation doesn't tell us much. So let's break down what type of transformation each element of this matrix contributes towards. If we just pull or push on the vector i hat along the x-axis. The result is a transformation that scales everything along the x-axis. If we pull or push on the vector j hat along the y-axis, the result is a transformation that scales everything along the y-axis. If we stretch the vector j hat along the x-axis, 
it results in what is called a shear along the x-axis. And if we stretch the vector i hat along the y-axis, we call it a shear along the y-axis. A rotation is a combination of shear and scaling, and all four elements of the matrix are involved. What if we want to rotate by a specific angle? For that, we need a special matrix called the rotation matrix. Let's consider a unit circle and we want to rotate a vector by some angle theta. We just have to see where the basis vectors land after the rotation and record the values in a matrix form. This is our desired rotation matrix. Now we can plug in whatever theta value we desire and it results in pure rotation. Adding a vector to another vector translates it. An extension of linear transformation is affine transformation, which consists of matrix vector multiplication along with addition of another vector. If we add a vector, say, minus 2, 0, it translates the whole plane by two units along the negative x-axis. We are free to successively perform any number of these transformations individually or otherwise. In 3D, we have three elementary rotations about the three axes and their corresponding rotation matrices. Rotation about an arbitrary axis in 3D is just some combination of the three elementary rotations. And for translation, we add a 3D vector. In robotics, we are mostly interested in only rotation and translation, which are together called rigid body transformations. Now that we have a way of representing rotation and translation, we also want to chain rigid body transformations as many times as there are joints in a mechanism. But by doing so using only our current understanding, the equations become horrendous really fast. With Cartesian coordinates, there is no elegant way to perform affine transformations with a single matrix vector multiplication. But there should be nothing stopping us from inventing or discovering new mathematics that have a more elegant form like this, right? That is exactly what we can do using homogeneous coordinates. If I give you a point x, y in 2D and ask you to represent it in 3D, you would probably choose z equal to 0. With homogeneous coordinates, we place the point on the z equal to 1 plane. This gives us the power to represent all transformations as just matrix vector multiplications. We require n plus 1 dimensions to represent an n-dimensional vector in homogeneous coordinates. Homogeneous coordinates are used in computer vision, computer graphics, photogrammetry, robotics, etc. Let's go through the steps to convert between Cartesian and homogeneous coordinates. To convert from Cartesian to homogeneous coordinates, we just append a 1. To convert from homogeneous to Cartesian coordinates, we first divide each coordinate with the last coordinate, w, to make it equal to 1 and only then can we ignore that last value. Therefore, w cannot be equal to 0 when we are converting to Cartesian coordinates. Similar steps apply for 3D and higher dimensions as well. Because we are now working with an n plus 1 dimensional vector, the size of our matrix should also change to match. For a 2D case, instead of this rigid body transformation, we pad zeros and ones in appropriate places for bigger matrix. And we can still achieve the same rotation and translation as before. You can check that the additional zeros and ones don't affect the result in any way. So we just write a bigger matrix. Is that it? No. Because now that we have an extra one in the homogeneous coordinate vector, we can also perform translation using the same matrix by replacing the last column with the translation vector. One matrix vector multiplication can be used to represent rotation and translation using homogeneous coordinates. 
Transformations involving homogeneous coordinates are called homogeneous transformations. And they all look like this. Let's visualize the transformation given by this matrix 1, 0, minus 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 on the 2D plane. Let's place our 2D plane in 3D at z equal to 1. Let's also have another 2D grid for visual aid. We can see that in 3D, this is just another shear. But in 2D, it can only be perceived as a translation. There are many cool things that we can do using homogeneous transformations and that deserves its own video. Now we know how to fuse a rotation matrix and a translation vector into a single matrix. And we also understand how and why it works. That is exactly the goal of this video. Thinking about revolution prismatic joints as the edge cases of a general helical joint and by moving to a higher dimension and abstracting out what happens in said higher dimension, we have arrived at a general transformation that incorporates rotation and translation in one operation and is called homogeneous rigid body transformation. There are many more powerful ways to achieve this, like matrix exponential and the Rodriguez formula, screw theory, quaternions, dual quaternions, etc., which we will explore in the upcoming videos.